Okay, are you ready? <laughs> we are we are on our way to um, a couple brand new churches today. And I'm sorry, I have a cramp in my. I'm looking it out here. No. <laughs> are you ready? You're gonna love this little song. It's 30 seconds or 15 seconds or something silly like that. But here we go. Remember that for the 1950s? Any, any of you, you old enough to remember that? <laughs> anyway, we're going to be talking about letters today. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about seven letters written for seven churches. These churches are churches of the ages, okay, amongst other things. And uh, Patty, let's have you start off with this here. Jesus wrote letters to these churches. They came through John, to them and for us. Keep that in mind. We are starting to connect some dots here that we've never really seen before. Can you imagine? The whole church thing started back in the days of Jesus, right? Our 2,000 years, our 2,000 years, our 2,000 years, remember? 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. We're all the way up to six. We're moving into the the last 2,000 years of that, and this has been going on since the days of Jesus, these letters to these churches. I want you to keep that in mind, okay? Letters to churches. Okay, <clears throat> go ahead, San, uh, Patty. Each church had a particular characteristic, some good, some bad. We are now awake and aware. Our watchman on the wall time has finally begun. I want you to know that today. Okay? We have, we have awakened to this period of time, and we should be awake and aware as to what's going on. This, this is a process that's been happening to you over the last several, I don't know, six months at least. We thought we knew some stuff. We had facts and figures and that kind of thing. But now this is something that's, it's, it's not just facts here and facts here and facts here and facts here. This is a whole movement thing that's going on. It goes from one age to the next age of Christianity. From when, when, when did Jesus, uh, when was he resurrected? How many years ago? Almost exactly 2,000 years ago. Almost exactly 2,000 years ago. So we're dealing with 2,000 years of this church history, of, of the life of Jesus and the revelation, the revelation of who he is. Okay? Jesus and the revelation of who he is. It's 2,000 years in the coming. And we're right close to the end of the, of the 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, the end of those two, that last age of 2,000 years. Okay, here we go. These letters were penned 2,000 years ago. Yeah. If we don't, won't read them, we will be counted foolish. That makes sense? If we don't read, if we don't read what's in God's word, we will be counted foolish. Here is a composite list of the seven churches throughout the last two thousand years. This is us. This is us. One lack of love for Jesus and our fellow men. Two faithfully facing persecution for His sake. Three, falling into compromise rather than standing firm. Four, indulging in over-tolerance at the expense of church discipline. Five, kidding itself that everything is all right when there is only empty form with no function and no power. Six, presented with great opportunities for evangelism and service. Seven, and growing lukewarm in devotion and duty. Okay. So somebody make some comments on that because those are seven very powerful statements that are right there. And this describes the seven churches. The 
that Jesus uh, wrote of in the book it, that John gave to Jesus gave to John to write about about us and about them and about those seven churches. So it's a composite. You get this? This is a composite picture of who we are and what we have become. Any of the words that we use today that came out of Christendom, quote, quote, you know, unused period of time, they have origins in Greek god worship, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. in Greek. That's true. Yep. Anybody else have a comment? Does this make sense? Okay. Like stuff that we need to be aware of. And to do. Yeah. do. Yeah, we do. Listen and do. Hear and do. Hear and do. That's where we should be right now. We should be doing the hear and do. It's not. What, it's not whatever. Young young people say that. Oh, whatever. It's not a whatever time anymore. It's a. This is a hear and do time. Terry. A lot of megachurches are not presenting this because they would lose followers and they would lose. Mm -hmm. And so the pastors would be would be able to have their large homes and retirement um, building up. Plus, also, I think as far as the goddesses and the gods, we have substitute Hollywood personalities, especially for the young people on social media and the social influencers. Mm -hmm. are, you know, doing so much damage mm -hmm. to the children. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So this is this is. This is the pot of stuff that we're that we're that we're into, and this is the, also the pot of stuff that, that uh, the Lord is beginning to. Number one, we're aware of it, and number two, He's beginning to clean this up. So keep your broom going, okay? Keep your push, your push broom going, right? Because this is what this is what He's asking us to do, okay? There's lots of things that we're gonna. He, he's asking us. To do. I'll just be part to participate in it. Everybody, shake your head up and down. And go yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Over tolerance number four is a, is a real big one. <coughs> That's true. Number four, over oh, where? Indulging in over tolerance. Indulging in over tolerance. Oh, number four. See, I looked. My brain went so, and saw number six. Okay. <laughs> over tolerance. Yes, at the expense of church discipline. Yep. Anything else? It's a clear example of how you lose your footing with your family, uh -huh. as well as your country, and those around you before you get, and then it goes to your country. Yeah. Yeah. It mushrooms out. Yeah. So, so the work that the, the work that our friend over here is working on over here in Hawaii this next week is going to be is ex exactly along these lines. You're going to be doing a great work for the kingdom in this. You don't know what it's going to sound like, or what it's going to look like, or what it's going to taste like, or feel like, or anything. But this, this is, this is you're showing up. You're showing up, and you're reporting for duty. You're reporting for duty. That's exactly right. That's all. That's all he asks us, asks of us. Yeah, to believe him and obey him. Trust and obey him, right? Trust and obey. <clears throat> anything else? Another comment? Whatever. You said this last week, but two of them were positive. Yeah. Are negative. So um, clearly, there was more falling away than the way is narrow. Yeah, the way it. Yeah. The way it's narrow. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see where this. Now that we know these seven statements here, let's see where. Let's see where this is going to lead us. Um, so uh, this is just as a as a as a minor review, and I was gonna. I was going to get out Terry's pointer, oh. but I guess we'll just. <laughs> okay, so let's just look at. Let's just old review. Time laser pointer. My old time laser pointer. <laughs> it looks like for church discipline. <laughs> 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 Won't hurt very much. Okay, so we have. Uh, let's see, let me see. I think I want to start out here with this one, actually. So I'm going to go there. Just to make sure that we're geographically located. There it is. Again. <laughs> so this is where Patmos was. This is where John the Re can you see? Am I in your okay, uh, where John the Revelator was over here on Patmos. So that that's and it was, remember a couple weeks ago we kind of equated it to like Alcatraz. It was kind of like out there in the middle of nowhere, kind of. 
middle of San Francisco Bay or something. But uh, so Patmos, and that's where he. This is where the letter was written to the seven churches. Okay, and uh, we've already dealt with. So that the first one that we dealt with was uh, Ephesus, and then we which my X, my see my X my red X here. Uh, and then the next one was Smyrna, and uh, uh, this is Pergamus here, right here. So one, two, three. And now we're going to be dealing with Thyatira, room number four over here, and Sardis, uh, four and five. Four and five, okay? And then that leaves us how many to go, to go for? We have two more to go for. Okay, so, which probably won't happen until after the 4th of July, so. All right, just so we're geographically, <coughs> so we're, we're geographically located. Doesn't get yourself geographically located. Okay. Um, okay. Pat. Now, and, and and these seven churches are not in Israel. Okay, they're not in Israel. We're not talking about Israel. Okay, we're we're not talking about. They're in Turkey. They're over in, in Turkey. Okay, and that's where kind of Christianity was basically born in the midst of in the midst of uh, these seven churches here. So. Many now it's Muslim, isn't it? Is the church all practically all Muslim? Yes. 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 Y
this isn't referring to Jezebel, the wife of Ahab. Sure it is. Oh, it is? Well, oh, yeah. Spirit. Spirit. This person spirit. is like, is yeah. like a Jezebel. Spirit, okay. spirit, spirit, it's spirit, of Jezebel. It's a yeah. spirit of Jezebel, yes. You know, the thing that is, it's that thing that just, a lot of pagan worship, and that's yeah. why all into that is so right. kind of, it's right. like even today, sometimes there's people in the church who are actually living in a situation where they should be living certain way, and yet at the same time, they think, oh, Jesus, forgive me. I'm okay. And it's just like, they're, they're really on slippery ground. What do the red words say? What well, then the red words say? Well, the red, <laughs> Right. Didn't Robert Morris, wasn't he just found out with yes. sexual immorality? Yes. And they had Mike Bickle of yes. IHOP, and yep. now they have P. Davis. These, these, these are all the... These are all the P. Davis, yeah. P. James, is he homosexual? Oh, I don't know. With women. But it sounds like the Nicolaisans to me. Yes, it does. This is All this stuff is now coming... It, it, it's now uh, blooming in the midst of everything. Go ahead, Terry. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am who searches the mind and heart. And I will give to each one of you according to your work. Okay. <coughs> now to you I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other but hold fast what you have till I come. Okay, so on one hand, he's saying, hold fast over here until I come. On the other hand, over here, he's saying, um, who have the doctrine of, uh, who have the depths of Satan. That's the people in, the, in this church that he's talking to who have not known the depths of Satan. And what you just kind of described was, was some of that, Terry. A lot of these, they know that, uh, did I say that? I said that backwards, yeah. That's right. They know <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, here we go. And he who overcomes and keeps my work until the end, to him I will give power over the nation. Oh my goodness, did you hear what he just said? If you overcome, he's going to give you power over the nations. Over the nations? He's going to give you power... Yeah, Terry, would you ever, uh, uh, not, 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 not just, come. yeah, go ahead. And keep my work until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Oh, Patty, I want to hear you say that. I will give what? I will give power over the nations. That's a powerful thing to say. I'm going to give you power over the nations. In other words, let's put it this way. Let's just translate it over here into th these kind of words. God wants a partnership with you. He wants to partner with you. Wow. Wow. God wants to be your partner. He doesn't want to be your adversary. The devil's the adversary. He wants he wants to be your partner. He wants to partner with you. Is that not what he just sorry, read that read that last part again? So then I go on and read the rest. Yeah. And he who overcomes and keeps my work until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. As I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. Yeah, I don't know exactly yet what that means, but I do know we're talking about um, clay, and we're talking about iron, coming together here in just, a, in just a few minutes, right? Iron and clay, and he's going to bash those things to pieces. That's not going to be part of you. That's going to be part of a, something brand new in his kingdom. Okay? Yes, ma'am. But also... But also... But please. also, he's talking to them. Yes. And he's telling them, um, I'm going to do all this, and hold on, hold fast to what you have till I come. Yes. He's Until I come is them. a very important word to them. He's talking to them. So to me, that's a clue mm -hmm. that they knew he was coming right. in their lifetime. He, he didn't say, till I come in 2024. He didn't say that. Right. He well, said, till I come. He, he can come yeah. in, those, in those generations. He And he can yeah. come in lots of generations, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, he can do whatever yeah. he, he wants. He can do whatever he wants. But right? he promised them yes. then. Yes. So I looked up demonstration in the Strong's Concordance of what it meant in Hebrew in that verse. And 
and it's like first fruit. It's the first. Is what generation. Mm -hmm. And they were the first. Yep. Born of the Holy Spirit. Yep. Right? And that's what a lot of the generations in the New Testament talk about is the first. The first were long ago. Yep. Okay, so. Yep. The morning star is Jesus himself. Yep. Over and over, yes. And the iron and the clay are like the feet of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's um, statue. Yes, and we'll, and we'll get in. Very good, Terry, and we'll get into that here in just a minute. And one more sentence here, um, Terry. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Okay. If you're, you, so we, but we got to listen, right? We got to listen, and we got to pay attention to what he's, what he's saying. This is for you. Okay, uh, Byron. What we need to know about Thyatira. Thyatira was inland off the coast. Paul visited there. Thyatira was famous for its purple dyes, rare and royal. It was the center for the making of this dye for the entire known world. For the entire known world. This is where pure purple came from. <laughs> Thyatira. Purple, Thyatira. Can you say that? Purple and Thyatira. Dire, dire, and purple. They kind of go together. Okay. In the book of Acts, a woman named Lydia from Thyatira was very wealthy and a worker in purple dye. Thyatira had a large Roman theater. The church in Thyatira was wealthy. Some say that Jesus is speaking to the wealthy church in the Western world. That's, as in today. That's a comment on today, I guess. These Christians are patient loving, enduring, and multiplying in their midst. But, but, there's that word but again, but, but. <laughs> Jesus has these things against you. You tolerate Jezebel and the doctrine of immorality. Repent, or sickness, tribulation, death will follow. Unless we repent, these are the things that are going to follow. Okay, you got that? What are they again, Myra? Repent what or what? Repent or sickness, tribulation, death will follow. Okay. And that little square up there, I couldn't read it. Oh, where? Patty, maybe. Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Famous for its purple dyes and gills for tanners, dyers, woolen, and linen workers. These led to an extensive use of clay pots and pagan oh, wow. celebrations. Many Christians died rather than compromise in guild festivities. Okay, so there's guilds and there's um, clay pots. Okay, clay pots hmm. and and well, guilds and those guilds those guilds are the same thing we would call them today uh, unions. unions. Oh. And yeah. they didn't have gloves, so they had a lot of purple hands. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Did they did purple they, come from a well. Some of, yeah, there's a, I, I read quite a bit about that. Yeah, uh, it, it could, mostly it came from snails, which in Thyatira, if you'll notice, was not, was not on the coastland. It was off the coast a little bit, so, and it took a whole bunch of snails to make um, some purple dye, and we'll get into that here in just a minute, but, um, so here's kind of a picture that I, this is very important, this whole concept of repent. We do not want to be the guy who hangs on and goes, well, I'm just going to do it my way. We don't want to. Repentance, and, and what did we talk about this last week? What does repent mean? Turn, Turn around and go a different direction. Repent. Yes, you're sorry. Yes, you're... Da, 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 and, and turn around and go a different way and follow, and follow Jesus. I don't know. I, so. I would think it would be. Yeah. I think 90 would be. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't go 180. <laughs> you go, I mean, or 360, you wind up where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> it's the idea of the prodigal son going away, so repentance to come back yeah. to his word, not just to go somewhere else, but yeah. to come back. Come back to his word, yes. That's what repentance is about. Well, there's still time, and, and, and there's a lot of people um, kind of in that kind of a situation, so it, which is why it's real important to be praying for your, those grandkids, those grandsons, and so forth, okay? This is, this, you, you do what you can do, and then you move on, right? 
right? Yep. But just do it. Okay, here we go. Thyatira. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Known for cloth dyeing, purple. Used by deities. Used by trade guilds all over Thyatira. Wool, linen, outer garments, leather, and bakers, potters, etc. It was a very busy city with lots of output. Thyatira located on the Lycus <coughs> River. <coughs> Apollo was the main god of the sun. Lydia was from this city of Thyatira and became a trader of purple. <coughs> Today, that cloth is known as Turkish red. Okay, that's Lydia, not the person, but Lydia, the, the <coughs> territory. Are you okay? Yeah. You get some water? <laughs> yeah, we do. I know what about that. Uh, Myra, you want to pick up on this There's one? There's the Church of Thyatira. Eyes like a flame of... I know your works. I am he who searches the mind and heart. Lest you think you're going to get away on this world with God getting... Not getting... I just said that backwards. <laughs> getting away with anything. He's going to figure it out. He knows you. He, he's, he knows you already. Okay. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You allow that woman Jezebel. This is the spirit that has caused much trouble. We have lots to discover there. Yeah. So this spirit attaches itself to Jezebel, right? All right. Ah, look at there. No, there's no words there. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Yeah. Or whoever. Uh, no, we do. That's you. Eyes of fire, 218. Jesus' power and spiritual sight is on full display here. Nothing escapes his scrutiny. He sees what is right and wrong with the church. His feet appear to be like blazing white brass. He stands ready to do ever since he finds in Thyatira. 219-21. The note of praise is in this verse. In Revelation 2.20, correction, for they tolerate the woman Jezebel and with her the doctrine of unrighteousness and ungodliness. In Revelation 2.21, she was called back to God to repent, but she refused to repent. Okay, so this Jezebel person refused to repent. She was called to repent, but she would not. Okay? That's going on now. That's going on right now. Giving everyone a chance to repent. Yes. She would not. All Christians should earnestly desire that their last works may be their best works. But this church tolerated Jezebel's false teaching and collaborated with wicked seducers. And that's exactly what's going on. I mean, all of a sudden, 2,000 years late, believe me, this has been going on for 6,000 years, and all of a sudden we're aware of, what do you mean there's child trafficking and, and young girls are being kidnapped and being sold into slavery and da da da, da you know, etc. That's how asleep we are, we have been, okay, here in America, for crying out loud. And now we realize, oh my gosh, this has gone on since... Day one, in 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 um, not in God's kingdom, but in Satan's kingdom. Okay. God is known by the judgments He executes. He knows the hearts of men. God's judgment against Jezebel and her followers was just and severe. Do you believe that to be true? God is just and severe. Is that is that is that okay with you? Yep. We, that's exactly what we need right now, isn't it? In this time period that we're, we have moved into. Okay. Uh, Myra? Thyatira. Thyatira was founded by Seleucus, one of Alexander the Great's generals. You remember Alexander the Great? Remember he, he, he spread everywhere and he did it very quickly and he was a very young man. But he, his, the, uh, the Greeks were huge. 
And uh, Seleucus was one of the four generals of Alexander the Great. Alexander died, and he, the, the area was divided into four sections because it was so big, and Seleucus was one of those guys, okay? <clears throat> Insignificant, it was a small outpost captured and destroyed several times. In the later years, the manufacturing base would come to be known for instruments of brass and bronze. And purple. <laughs> The people of Thyatira used trade unions or guilds. Many items were made in Thyatira. Think, look for the union label. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Purpose in the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. A lot of the jobs have disappeared. A lot of the clothes Americans are buying for women and kids are imports. They're being made in foreign places. When the work's done here, we can support our families and pay our taxes and buy the things other Americans make. That's what the label says, Union. Look for the Union label when you are buying <laughs> And she wanted to know where the came from. <laughs> they came from right there. So, um, Myra? Go ahead. Being a Christian made things difficult. Christians had to join a union or guild. Their dues paid for sacrifices to idols. Oh. To be a member of a union meant compromising one's faith. Worshipping idols was not an option. We can we can translate that over to why don't you talk can you talk a little bit about you you were a teacher you were a union teacher person yeah. T -t teacher but yeah at a school <laughs> yeah at school yeah just give it some so, samples of that yeah. so I was um, teacher at a school in Loveland and they did a big promo for joining the teachers union and I didn't believe in the teachers union so I said I didn't want to join it and. So they were mad, but they accepted it. But I never heard the end of it. And whenever we had a raise or anything, see, we worked hard and got you a raise, but you're not in the teachers' union. Yeah, see, all that see, kind of stuff going on. So all and all of a sudden, those people in the unions who pay, who were due paying, paying, card carrying union workers, all of a sudden they were being told by the upper echelons who, who really ran things as to what they were going to do. Yeah. It, 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 in their, and, that's, and that's how all this stuff got born here in America, right? <clears throat> you All of a sudden you weren't a free person anymore because you had to join a union. Yeah. That makes sense? That's where all this, that's how ancient this stuff is, okay? <laughs> And those, those people at Thyatira who didn't want to worship idols? They had to quit the union. They had to quit the union. So, so they lost their job. Yep. Or worse. So, see, how, see how this works? This is how subtle the enemy is. At first, the union helped people get proper pay. Yeah. That was the idea. The auto yep. workers, they, at first, they, and steel workers, they were paid right. very poorly for, right. for very heavy work. Earlier, but yeah. then it got out of control. Yeah, power corrupts. Everything, yes, and corrupt, and corrupt power corrupts absolutely, right? So. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So now we understand, this just gives you kind of a, kind of a, a suggestion as to where all this stuff came from to begin with, you know, so it's all very interesting. That's illegal. <laughs> wow. Good old. Yeah. 
There well, you go. And all of a sudden, there's your Bill of Rights. Somebody was talking well, about. I think the CEO of the United Way also was um, taking money off the top. Sure. That, that, that's what. That's how the, all this stuff happens. It, it begins here, and it just kind of, and it just, and it just spreads out. But one rat in will corrupt the whole. That's barrel. exactly right. That's right. That's exactly right. I was delighted in my um, uh, uh, job hunting days, and I got called into uh, Chile, you know, the spice company. And I thought, oh, cool, I get to work for the spice people because I love the spices, you know. <laughs> and the first thing they wanted was to know if I would join the union. Wow. I never got the job. Okay. You I never didn't, got, want it. didn't want the job. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, yeah, I just don't want the job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the only time that Jesus calls himself. The Son of God. I want you to I want you to make note of that. At Thyatira, this is the only time that Jesus calls himself the Son of God. Before he was called the Son of Man. Son of Man, the Son of Man, the Son of Man. Now all of a sudden here he's being one time, first time, only time, he's gonna be in, in in Revelation here, he's being called the Son of God. Okay? Thyatira is where Jesus was introduced as the one with eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Jesus' power and spiritual sight is on full display here in Thyatira. Only Jesus has this authority. Only him. He is commanding the church to stop tolerating Jezebel. He will make her sick and kill her children and all the churches will know that he searches the mind and heart. This is Jesus talking. He's the one who's going to what? Let's let's read that last sentence again, okay? He will he is commanding the church to stop tolerating Jezebel. Okay. He will make her sick and kill her children. That doesn't sound like a very nice thing for Jesus to do, does it? That's what he said. He's what? He's righteous. He's so we righteous. Have to, we have to make our opinions adjust to what he is. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. Yes. That's right. Thank you. That's, that's exactly that's right. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. He will do this. He will do this. There's, there's, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. This is what he's going to do. This is why we need to repent. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, didn't they, weren't they? Um, Bronze and what was the other metal they used? And so his feet are like a flame of fire. His feet, brass. Okay. Brass, yeah. And so his feet are like brass. Yes. Fire. Yeah, yeah. This is this is fire coming out of his eyes, almost, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> anyway, um, I think we're at the. Are we at the next one? He, and all, all, and all. Look, how many? All how many? Churches all churches know that he searches. All of the churches are going to know that he searches the hearts and minds of men. Okay? All of them. There's not going to be any doubt about this. We're getting real close to this right now as we're watching this ridiculous um, um, clown show play out in front of us. It's a clown show. It's a clown show. It's a comedy. It, it's a very bad, it's a very bad dark comedy, but until we wake up, until we're awakened to what's going on. Obedience requires a little discipline. And we're going to be able to stand firm because we're not going to rock with the boat. We're not going to get lost in the, of all these things that are, are happening right here in our midst. Akshav, right here, right now, right? There's, a, there's so many lies being told out there. Don't swallow them. Does Jesus know what he's doing? He knows what he's doing. And you, are, my friends, are going to be all right. Right, Jeff? That's exactly right. Jeff said so. <laughs> Jesus said so. Jesus said so. And then they take things like the pride flag. Well, we have six colors instead of seven, so they're mocking. Yeah. They're mocking God. Yes. Don't be... This sounds so, so much like Old Testament Jesus, you know, when he said, then they will know that I am God. Then they will know that I am God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will do this and I will do this and then they will know that I am God. 
And he says here, all the churches will know that I am God, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And I search the mind and the heart. They'll all know. They'll all know. They'll, they'll all know. watch what happens here and they'll all know. That's exactly right. And that's what we're that's the picture that we're trying to paint here together, right? Okay, so yay. Very good. I love your guys' comments. Okay. <clears throat> Myra? Notes from the Geneva Study Bible. <clears throat> But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Okay. Somebody's going to have to help me with my English because, I mean, I, I, can, I can see the words, and I know that you know the words, but... Help me to understand what it was It was just said there because my brain wants to flip that around. Any comment? Well, it's saying if you're not going along with this spirit of Jezebel and you're not participating in it, then it's not going to burden them. Right. Anymore. He's not... So those people are good, right? Right. Right. It's the people over here that aren't paying attention they're going with the flow, they're right? Following Jezebel. They're following Jezebel. Okay, good. Oh, there's my arrow. Here, that means something. Let's see what that means. Okay. He points out the bragging of certain men who boasted of their deep, that is, plentiful and common knowledge, which nonetheless is devilish. I will speak no worse than against you being content to have shown you what I require to do in you. Note, that is grace and forgiveness. So, in the midst of all this stuff that's going on in Thyatira and, the, and God's people, the people that are catching it, um, he said that, that's literally a description of grace and, and forgiveness that's going on there with his with his this, church. This all has to do with cover up too. Yeah. This he, Robert Morris yes. thing. Oh yes. This, is, this is a too. cover this has been covered up for yep. thirty years. Yep. And Johnny Enlow said a very profound thing. He said, When you engage in a cover up for thirty years, you are keeping the sin alive. You may not be sinning anymore but you're keeping that sin alive because you haven't dealt with it, repented of it, gotten yeah. forgiven for it. Yeah. You've covered it up. For so Ro years. Robert Morris, I don't know if you know who Robert Morris is, but he's, he's a picture, I mean, he's a pastor out of Dallas, Texas, and he is a huge megachurch. And he, give him an example of what's been going on there. Because right? this, is, this is not gossip, this is... This is well, the truth he, that's going on. Tell them a little bit. He had a four and a half year long affair. Twelve year old girl. Twelve to sixteen. She's twelve to sixteen in those years. Where he had that power over her. And then he covered it up for thirty years. And now she's come out and told Jezebel. So there you go. For a spirit of Jezebel. And that he was the victim. Uh, that, that's he's saying that he was the victim. Oh my word! A twelve-year-old compared to a grown man. And See, he, his wife okay. even called the woman who was twelve and said, "I forgive you." Not yeah. Again, blaming the twelve-year-old for the, what happened. Not yes. for this either. thing is that coming is down. Is Jesus is not going to tolerate this. No. That's why. Anyone. That's why all this stuff is coming down, and this yeah. is why it's all being revealed here in the Book of Revelation. This is what we're talking about here. Yes, ma'am. Well, then when you think of the pedophilia that was happening in the Catholic Church that was covered up for so many, many oh, yeah, years. For sure. And they would pass the priest on from congregation to another yeah. until they, hey, well, hey, they hey, did you, more boys than now girls. Yep. Hey, yeah. Hang, hey, hang on. Here. This is this is the this is the un, this is the the uncovering of all this stuff that's been going on. Okay? So unveiling. unveiling. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have one more little part here. Who's? I think. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Verse 25, but hold fast what you have until I come. Until he comes. In he's other coming. words, I'm coming. He's coming. But hold fast. Don't get, 
don't get shook up and don't get shaken out of the out of the boat. You hold on the Okay? There there is absolutely there's no fear here. Unless you won't repent. Unless you won't repent. Right? Then there is. Then you're in big trouble then. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Jesus will be not only king over all the nations, but also their shepherd. The fact that he and the conquerors use a staff of iron indicates that not everyone will voluntarily submit to Jesus' rule, but everyone will have to submit to it. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to submit, but you will have to submit to, to this. I mean, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the king of glory. Why wouldn't we want to? Who wouldn't want to follow a God like this? Right? Right. Yep. Until they die, until they're gone. Yeah. And, and, and that's part of the cleanup. Get your broom out. That's part of the, that's part of the push broom stuff that we're, that we're dealing with now. So, so don't be surprised when this stuff is happening. I'm going to say it again. Don't be surprised when this stuff is happening. Because it's supposed to happen. There's, there's no surprise here. There's no fear here. This is the cleanup that's happening. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Commentary on the people that are getting exposed. We were exposed to Robert Morris's teaching. Uh, in the Me too. I used to follow Robert Morris a lot on Sunday afternoons. I would he listen to him. Good yes, he did. Teaching. Yes. Yep. Yes. That I can Along with it, if you're not careful, nevertheless, uh, I don't know if my thought was. I'm sorry. He exposes it, he brings it up, and uh, they can't get away with it. So that's what my thought was. My thought was, it's told us in the scripture, don't just take the word that's given you. So all the good stuff that different ones bring up, or it's close to the good stuff, it's just like edgy. Uh, Peter Dix is another good one. But yeah. uh, the point was that these people expose things that you have to question as an individual. You can't just take it because they're big names or have this great new philosophy <coughs> or whatever. Right. You know? Right. You take it to the word and say, God, I need clarity, and you're the only one that can provide it. Yep. Yep. The easiest thing to do is to just to hang on to the scriptures. The flesh is very vulnerable to that, especially yeah. these gifted speakers. You know, when, you look at, look at when he was uh, king of Israel, he was a, he was an adulterer and he was a murderer. That's right. Yep. Well, and, but you know the thing about David, he was a man after God's own heart. You know why? It's because he was a great repentant. That's right. And it's, you know, we all have got this sin nature that we have to deal with. We have to resist it continually because it's all in us it, and we have to fight it It's part of the fabric. Yes, that's, a, that's a, and it's hopefully a we're covering that. Our it's our fabric. Day. It's a fabric that we're made of. It's our, yeah, it is. We, we are just, it's just who we are. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's and who it's we are. The thing that is, it's the fact that we have to take and when we find out there's something in our life that's not there, it's going to be there. We got to just say, okay, God, you see what's going on in my life, and you know, I need to help with this. I want you to deal with it and take care of it. In other words, we're willing to let God deal with it and right. admit it. And that's, because if we don't yes. admit it, if we try to bury it like David did, he finally had to have Nathan the prophet come out and say, Nathan, <laughs> here, who's this man? David said to Nathan. He says, You are it, this man. Yeah. And, and, it, child, and, it, and it really, really it was at that point he was broken. He didn't say, oh, head, you know, or throw him in prison or whatever the case might be. He could have done that. That's right. And But the thing of it is, he realized, okay, I'm the one. I need it. And it's, you know, we come across, like, I just listened to um, <coughs> Kim Clement, <coughs> and he said, um, he was talking about how that sometimes people are pushed down so badly that they get to the point where they get so discouraged, they say, why even try anymore? And it gets to the point where sometimes we have to get to the point where he says, you know, we've got to look at God's grace is greater than our sin. And God will come to us and he'll forgive us. But we just have to come to the point of admitting where we're at and asking God to help us. And he will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we yeah. can all look at our past, you know, all the different things that we could have gotten involved in. 
We didn't get involved in it, but God was there. And if we did, we turned away from it and we said, Lord, forgive me and help me to overcome it. That's right. So we're all in that same boat and we have the same temptation. And when God speaks to us, if we're willing to listen like David was, maybe we become a person after God's own heart, yeah. a person who's willing to turn and repent. And I think right. that's such a good that's lesson good. from this boy. Th thank you. That's, that's, that's a good ad. the child between himself and yes, he did. The, the, the young boy died. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. he did die. I think that kind of just goes right along with the <laughs> with the scripture that we're reading. And, and the death will follow you, right? <laughs> yeah. I want to hear what Sandy was going to say. <laughs> She, want, she wanted to say something. Oh, I'm sorry, She's Sandy. Were you raising your hand? Yeah, I want to hear. She has good things to say. Oh my goodness, I'm letting go of it. I knew you would, uh, but I don't want you to. <laughs> I've been listening to you all. To who? Please stand. To oh, just listening to us. No, to Robert Morris. Oh, to Robert. Oh, okay. I've been listening to him all. I'm broken. I am hard. I found out about this. He admitted to having affairs, but he always called her a young lady. Always in his, when he's talking, I had an affair with a young lady. Not once did he mention to anybody or into the elders that it was a 12 year old. Oh, jeez. He's very proud of his teaching. Very proud. I shall find. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I've been seeing the death of sin. Yeah. It's tremendous. Keep going back to that scripture and Jeremiah 17:9. The heart is deceitful beyond all. all. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Above all things. Yeah. Above all things. And I kept going over that a lot. I think it is very difficult for us to realize the depth of sin in every one of our hearts. Yeah, that's true. That's right. That's true. true. There, but for the grace of God, it's all right. Mm -hmm. And then the interesting thing is he blamed her for being yeah. a seducer. Like a twelve year old? Oh, yes. Sandy, you're right. I was clean, that's a good way to say it. I was clean. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Please. With like everybody all the believers that were Gateway Church and Robert Morris. Because that's yes. a lot of grief and that's a lot yes. of devastation. Yes, I was yeah. thinking that very same thing. That's and a very good yeah. point. exactly how Satan sneaks in is when we break because somebody we looked up to falls. Yeah, we fall on the rock. And Jesus is our rock. But <laughs> that's the way we got to fall. All the, these babes that just came to believe in Christ. Yeah. All these babes. They're yeah. not they don't know enough yet, possibly, that they're safe on their own. That's exactly right. Yeah, they definitely. I even asked Jim Baker, you know, when he yeah. was down for the right. cross, that was asking when he quit loving Jesus. He said he never quit loving Jesus. You know, he admitted he made a mistake, but that wasn't because of Jesus. <laughs> you know. So it's like, you know, these people involved getting worse in the ministry and whatnot, you know. I mean, here he is, just like that church lived in two worlds, if you will. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, like you say, I'm mean, sure you, you know, question everything. Yeah. yeah. But did Jimmy Gee. Swagger, how many years ago, Jimmy, about the time Jim Baker, Jimmy Swagger, yep. he never did. I don't think he ever apologized. Jimmy Swagger, yeah, I think yeah. he did. I think they, they were, you know, they took him out of the church, but I... I don't, I, I don't know. That's that's not for us to. That's not for now. <laughs> but but yeah. But I mean, so we can see that this stuff is going on all around us. All the, it's just it does. It just swirls and swirls and swirls, doesn't it? Yeah. And we're in. Yep. Yeah. Um, keep putting on my heart. 
to pray for him to reveal to me things that I don't remember and that I need to confess because I have erased my past, I've forgotten about it, and I, I can only repent those things that I know of. Right? If I don't know what I'm doing is wrong or what I did was wrong, how am I going to repent? So, Psalm 138, or I'm sorry, 139, 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O L, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts, and see if an idolatrous way can me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. And as I've been praying that prayer, there's there's times where it's, I don't hear the answer right away, but I'll be driving down the road doing work, and then I'm like, I remember that thing, yeah. and I repent. I said, forgive me, Lord, for doing that, yeah. because, you know, that was something that was unconfessed in my life, and, it's, and it holds you back. And if you continually pray to search me and show me, and I'm like, I was also praying, like, what is in my house that I need to get rid of? Is there any evil things in my house, you know, symbols or artifacts and stuff that I need to pop that have, you know, uh, wickedness attached to them. And then one day I was driving, I'm like, oh, I still have those things. And I I was going to give them to other people, but Zach told me, he's like, you know, don't give evil away. Evil to like, way, yeah. <laughs> no matter what it may be, he's like, pop it. And so I went home. As soon as I got home, I was going to grab those items and I threw them in the garbage. Like, we have to pray for the things that we have forgotten. About. That's right. That's right. See? But thank Look. God, he doesn't require perfection in anything. Because the heart is so deceitful, we'll never get to the bottom of our sin. It is. Well, I mean, I know I won't. Layers. I'll speak for myself. Layers. Yeah, it is idea. layers. So you'll never get to the bottom of it in the flesh. All he asks is that we keep working on it, you know? Because every day. Yeah. Everybody does. And it was, when, we, when God brings it up, then we just say, okay, well, we know it. Forgive but me. what we don't and know, he does, will be he does teach us to turn to. Uh, perfection as he looks at us so that we keep our heart set on the proper goal. Yeah. We can't possibly be perfect. I think it's ridiculous too. Sorry, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but the he point knows. is he wants us to, he wants us to try. Us. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Depend on him. So, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, Sandy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's good that we see the sin on ourselves because it makes us Yeah. Aren't you glad you know Jesus? Yeah. I mean, isn't the, I mean, I am. What's going on here in the, in the midst of of FOM today? This is a beautiful thing that's happening, and everybody's participating, and this is awesome. This is what we're supposed to be doing, right? This is the church. Yay! <laughs> This is our Sandy who's speaking, who very <laughs> seldom, I know she, I, I hear, I believe me, I hear these things from her, her herself, and she's doing this out in front of everybody today. This is huge. We need to hear it. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I remember um, <clears throat> in the old days, John Stocker at Resurrection Fellowship. He had, he was keenly aware of this kind of stuff, and he would not allow any of his staff people to give parishioners ride home, rides home. He would not allow any men to give ladies a ride home, or the other way around. He would not allow anybody to have a meeting in their office with the door closed. Their doors were always open. There was always people walking up and down the halls and lots of activity and stuff like that. And, and at the time, I remember thinking, wow, that's really extreme. But the more, I, more mature I got, the more I realized how important it was. And, and his staff understood and they agreed with him. And they, I remember one time Sarah, our daughter, needed a ride home. And her youth pastor was right there. And he could have given her a ride home. And he said, no, you need to call your mom. Mm. And I came and got her. Mm. 
and I mean that's how yeah. right. careful they were yeah. to guard against this kind of thing taking root anywhere. It oftentimes takes a very innocent way. That's right. That's very, very innocent way. And Is it still being done at well, Resurrection? I have no idea. Yeah. I just know under John Stockton. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. There we go. Who's less at the end of Jesus's earthly reign, those who submitted unwillingly will rebel. They will unite themselves against Jesus, but fall dead when he strikes them with the sharp sword that proceeds from his mouth. Revelation 19, 15 through 21. Have you ever seen this stuff before? We, this is stuff we've read and we've read and we've read and we've gone, oh, what does that mean? And we read it, we read it, and, we read it, and all of a sudden it's starting to make sense, isn't it? <clears throat> I used to question that sword coming out of your mouth is not. What's that mean? Yeah. It's like, what? What? But just now it clicked with me, a point. I don't know if it's good, right, or only, and that was because truth. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And you know it. Mm -hmm. And he'll stop you in your tracks. He'll stop you yep. right then and there. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 There you go. He's talking about cutting them to the heart. Yep. He's not really talking about making metal come out of his heart. No, right. He doesn't need the metal. He's dealing with your heart. Yeah. But they say life and death is in the power of the tongue. Isn't that the right. proverb? Mm -hmm. And James. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's read that last. Let's read that last sentence again, P Patty. They will. They will unite themselves against Jesus, but fall dead when he strikes them with the sharp sword that proceeds from his mouth. That's what the end of the deep state has. In, has unless you repent, don't. That's a perfect picture of that. You know, and all these guys that are playing fast and loose with, with the wealth, of the, you know, of the, of the wicked kind of a thing. That happened in the garden. Yep. When the when that mob said to him, "We're looking for Jesus of Nazareth," blah, and he said, "I am." I and am. They all fell Boom. down. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. They didn't die, but they fell down. This is this is good stuff. Okay, Mara. <clears throat> all these metals, gold, silver, brass will end with feet of clay. They will be crushed by the final sweep of the master's broom. Have you ever heard that phrase, a feet of feet of clay? Da -da 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 -da. But yeah, but he's got feet of clay. Well this is <laughs> let's see. Gold, silver, brass, iron, clay. Verse twenty seven, dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel, breaking clay vessels is also the act of a ruler with authority over the government. Lest you think that Jesus doesn't have, ruler over the, uh, doesn't have authority over the government of the United States or the United Nations or Israel or anybody else, right? He does, right? That's what he's talking about. Authority over government. <coughs> ruler with, he's a ruler with authority over the government. And he, these vessels will be broken. Okay, here we go. All authority has been given to Jesus. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Matthew twenty eight eighteen. Okay, let's see if we can put this. Remember, we saw this picture a little while ago. And there's the statue. Gold, silver, brass, iron, and feet of iron and clay, and this is where we are today, iron and clay, okay? Now watch what's going to, and, and then there's Jesus, who's the rock that we stand on, right? See the rock underneath? That's, that would be him. And we, we went through these last week, uh, but let's review them again, okay? Matthew 3, 2, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mark 1, 15. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Luke 5, 32. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 
Luke 13, 5. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Luke 24, 47. Jesus commands his disciples to take his message of repentance and faith to all nations. And this is where we are about to see this happening right here. Okay, there's that statue. There's those feet of clay and iron. And they're going to be destroyed, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Can you read that? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Revelation 2.17 Okay, Mara, why don't you take this one here? Breaking clay vessels is also the act of a ruler with authority over government. If the name follows the murder, the Father grants it to Jesus, and in turn, Jesus grants it to his faithful followers. We are in this together. Okay, what did that just say? There's an order. There's an order to follow here, right? First, it's it's the Father. It's right. It did not the Father grants it to Jesus, and and in turn, Jesus turns around and grants it to the followers. And you can't skip over Jesus. You can't skip over Jesus. You can't. You can't. You can't do that. No. The government will be shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. To his faithful followers. <laughs> to be faithful. Yes. yes. And believe me, when, when I say we're all in this together, we're all in this together. This is what I can. You, would you Would you like to be alive at any other time than right now? What's going on right now? Whew, this is awesome. I think. What do you think, Jeremy? Is this an awesome thing? This yeah. is an awesome time. It was right there. It was right above my. Anyway, <laughs> never give up. <laughs> frog, so you're saying the frog is reaching. It's never going to, yes. <laughs> I'll squeeze you, you squeeze me. <laughs> yeah, at, at any rate. So that's all I have to say about that. Thing to be alive right now, right? Hallelujah. Okay. Myra? Thyatira. Oh, we do. Thyatira, I'm sorry, go ahead. Thyatira means sacrifice of contrition or repentance. Simple faith was exchanged for penances and outward works. Thyatira has the longest track record of any of the seven churches. One thousand years is half Christian era. The message of Jesus to Thyatira was, I know your works, love, service, faith, and patience. The last are more than the first. It is fitting that during this time, reformers would arise and come forth to bring new hope and emphasis to add to God's work. Because this is all part of the same picture that's going on here at the, at the same time. All at once, all, all at the same time. It, and we just happen to be part of it. No. Thyatira just happened to be part of it. And we're part of it. Does that say the last are more than the first? Does that say in that faith and patience is better than most of the That's what I think it does. Yeah. I think so. Hmm. Hmm. This church receives the biggest rebuke of all the churches, and Jezebel is the significant party. In the Old Testament, Jezebel was a Phoenician and worshiper of Baal. Jezebel and Ahab were a couple that had lots and lots of issues. Neither were friends of Israel. Israel was led into idolatry. Because of them, the land was in a drought for 3.5 years. Isn't that interesting? There's that three and there's that three and a half marker, tide marker thing there. Three and a half years of Oop, no. I'm rain. sorry, I hit the wrong button. Three and a half years of no rain in the days of Elijah is a type and a figure representing the present age of the church. Can you, are you good enough to read that? <laughs> this was the time when paganism came into the church. 
This is the time when paganism came into the church, right here. Okay. This is also when it was. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm screwing up. Ah, that shouldn't have been there. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. King Ahab was controlled by his Phoenician wife, Jezebel. This is why church and state don't unite. It leads to corruption and persecution. The 3.5 years of no rain days of Elijah is a type and figure representing the age of the church. And the Roman church ruled as a joint religious political power. There you go, Terry, right? The yep. bishop of Rome was given power to correct heretics. He was given ecclesiastical authority and civil authority until Napoleon. This is also when it was realized that reform was needed. This was during the days of John Wycliffe and Martin Luther. Okay, let's see. We've just gone from we've just gone from Rome uh, to the Bishop of Rome to, to Napoleon to John uh, Wycliffe and Martin Wycliffe. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, and Martin Luther. Okay. Hold fast till I come. Nevertheless, hold fast to what you have until I come. And to the one who overcomes and continues in my work until the end, I will give authority over the nations. I think, let's see, I think, yep, no, we're good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thyatira had the longest letter to the seven churches. We know the least about these churches. It was considered insignificant. It was on a Roman road and started out as an insignificant outpost. It started out like little church on the prairie and was later known for commerce on a flat plain with no protection, no fortification, just a small outpost. It was just a small outpost. That's all these people were. You know, they, and they worked hard, right? They didn't have all these castles and ivory towers and all that stuff. They were just worker bees. During this biblical time period, there was peace, and it became a commercial center of prosperity. Over time, because of its lack of fortification, it was easy to overrun and overthrow. Because it didn't have a bunch of walls around it. Okay, so it was easy to overthrow it. Okay. They should have read about Nehemiah. Yeah. Just built a wall. <laughs> just built a wall. And the Romans used this outpost. It became known for items produced, both exports and imports. Shopping was easy under Roman rule. Trade guilds sprung up by leather, linen, tanners, potter, bakers. Most significant, Thyatira was known for the color purple and the dyeing of cloth. Purple dye produced by lots and lots and lots of snails. Those Michael's snails. Okay, so that's, I think that was kind of an add-on thing, so I apologize for that, but it was a little bit more information, and uh, so we're going to move on. This, yeah, I'm talking about your escargot. <laughs> Lots and lots and lots of snails. So I, I promise you this next one is, is a short letter. This is, Thyatira was long. This is a short one. And so let's take a look at Sardis, and this won't take very long. Ira? Sardis. There is not much excavating that has been done in Sardis. This village was insignificant as far as buildings were concerned. Watch this. No one started digging there until about 1968. Wow. That's how insignificant Sardis was. Okay. Yeah. Poor old Sardis. Poor old Sardis. Okay. Terry? To the angel Sardis, the compromising church, Revelation 3, 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things, says he, who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, you have a name, that you are alive, you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your work perfect before God. It's like a report card going out there to all these different churches. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, 
And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. This is going to happen so fast you won't even realize that it, that it happened. That's why he wants us to be watching him. Watching for him and watching him. Okay? Don't, don't go getting sloppy in your, in your faith walk. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. There you go. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That's almost the exact opposite uh, of English, anyway, of, than, the, than the other church. I will... Con um, <coughs> If I, I will confess his name before my father. He made that a little more uh, truncated or something like that in the, in, with Thyatira, did he? Did he not? I think. Notes from, oh, sorry. Notes from oh, the Lydian's okay. journey. <laughs> Sardis was once the capital of the Lydian kingdom and one of the richest kingdoms of the ancient world. Croesus was king of Sardis. How many of you remember the, the word Croesus? He was a king. Mm -hmm. And he, this is the guy, this is the guy that, uh, it, it, there was a phrase, it was called rich as Croesus. Do you, you remember that phrase from when you were a kid? From somewhere? He was rich as Croesus. Okay, well, I remember that. I don't know why I remember that, but... Um, Rich as Croesus, and uh, do you remember the, the the movie Daniel that we saw? Mm -hmm. And uh, and there was help me, um, who was the Cyrus, and and uh, and Daniel there, and they were older gentlemen, and the remember the somebody was going to take Daniel out with a with his with his sword, and uh, there was another guy that was there with him. It was his counselor. That was Croesus. That was in Babylon. Um, Cyrus had overtaken Babylon. Cyrus had overtaken Persia. The Greek, Persia, thank you. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. So, Croesus was Persian? Cyrus was Persian. Croesus had, it was overtaken by them. Cyrus was Persian. Croesus, he, maybe he was just a smaller, insignificant king or something, but he was, you know, I, am I saying this backwards? I'm saying this backwards, and I shouldn't. Just. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus was the was the head guy. Croesus came along. Croesus was he was as rich as Croesus. He was very, very, very wealthy, and, and Cyrus came along and squashed him because he got real sloppy with everything. Here, and we'll see that here in just a minute. So shut up, Susan, and let her go. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But this is an important part right here. Let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Yes. First Corinthians ten twelve. Okay, let's see how this works out here. Coined money was invented and developed here. This was under Croesus, okay? The rich guy. During the reign of Croesus, Sardis was wealthy, overconfident, and proud. Yes. Rich as Croesus. Rich as Croesus. <clears throat> Cyrus the Great, founder of the Persian Empire, captured Sardis in 549 B.C. Croesus didn't keep watch. The city of Sardis now lies dead and in ruins. The collapse of Rome in the late 5th century ushered in a roughly 1,000 year period, 500 CE to 1450 CE, known as the Middle Ages. I think that's right. What does CE mean? Current. Current era. Current era. Yeah. Just call it AD. AD. Oh, oh, it's like AD. Yeah. Oh, what kind of bed? Whether he's a faithful bed Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sardis, the city that had been known as alive, is dead. There is nothing there. Verse one. Sorry, there's nothing there. It was. The church started with a promise, but quickly faded. No church or individual Christian can survive on past reputation. Cowardness 
treachery, and overconfidence does not lead to success, nor does neglect and sloppiness. So if you're going to do a job, do it right and do it well, right? Yeah. Okay. Third, historical account. Notes from lineage journey. Sardis had been hard working during the time of Ephesus. Sardis had been persecuted during the time of Smyrna. Sardis was compromised during the time of Pergamus. Sardis was apostate during the time of Thyatira. Sardis, which was once alive, is now dead. Sardis doesn't have that great a report, does he? <laughs> does it? The name Sardis means that which remains. Sardis can be compared to the time period of the Reformation. From the time of Sardis to the end of the Reformation, 1830, is about 2,000 years. Oh boy. Sardis is all included in that. It kind of sounds like us. <laughs> the people of the Reformation settled into organized religion. Mother Church, Luther, Knox, state religion and was supported by the public treasury. The people of Sardis looked but they had settled into a sloppy, powerless, listless semblance of Christianity. We don't want to go there. Sloppy and powerless and we don't want to go there, right? I think this is this is this is what what you just read there, this is huge huge sentences. I, I don't know if you're catching them or not, but let's see. Mother Church, there's your Catholic, there's the Catholic Church, right? Luther, there's the Lutheran guy, you know? And, uh, and Knox, John, I don't even know who John Knox is. And the State Church, that sound, well, sounds like, I don't know, somewhere between communism and us here, right? <clears throat> Was supported by and it was supported by the treasury. There's all your student loans, right? Etc. 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 I think it's interesting that if that Jesus calls a powerless church, powerless church, a dead church, he expects us to have his power. Yes, he does. And to be using it. Yes. He expect. He, he, he's an expected thought. Look at this. He's an expectant father. Think on that for a minute, okay? God is an expectant father. He expects a, he expects you to be using his stuff, right? Sardis, that which remains. But oh, there's that big butt again. We just gotta have it. Have it. It's about the I don't know the fourth or fifth or sixth <laughs> big butt, butt that we've had in there. There is always hope. <laughs> Somebody say that. But there's always hope because that's how big your God is. There's always hope. The Bible always presents hope among the ruins. You have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and who shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. Verse 3. But God... Despite the majority of Protestants falling into dead churchianity, there will be some who will overcome. This is the remnant of true believers. If you ever wanted to be have a label, remnant is your word. Okay? Learn how to spell it. Learn how to use it. Because that's what you are. You're part of a remnant and you're going to be more powerful than you can even imagine. You're going to be more power you are going to be more power you're this little remnant is going to be more powerful than, I don't know, communism, China. Yep, that's right. Yes. What else? The uh, what's the name? Huh? Deep State, United Nations, all of it. All, this, all the crap that they're trying to throw at you, you're going to be more powerful than that, and that, that's going to be made up of the remnant, because that's how big your God is. You got it? 
Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that, right? This is the time period that we see the rise of American colonies, which formed the foundation of a new nation. Verse 17, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes in Sardis, receives the best of promise. Those who walk in white shall be clothed in white, and I will not blot his name from the book of life. Hallelujah. Revelation 3, 4 through 5. He will not blot his name out. Here we go. Hold on, hold fast, and repent. We don't want routines or monotony in our faith walk. Pray for renewal and new reformation. It is life. Sardis suffered, was captured, was careless, and was told to watch. We need to watch our spiritual condition. Don't become overconfident. Keep a careful eye on your walk with God and joy. We don't want or need a dead religion. We want our lives written in the book of life. White is a symbol of victory and joy. Hallelujah. And I'll just add one more. So that, this is a good slide in case you're taking pictures or anything. But that, that's a really good slide. But And you're not going to go there. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave you with this one. So I, this is one of my favorite pictures. Never give up. <clears throat> Remember, um, this 2,000 year journey is his gift to you. Ex he expects you to use it wisely. It's a gift. Know how to use it, find out what the instructions are, and use that gift wisely. Okay? You see the. Does anybody get the humor in this picture, in this cartoon? Okay. <laughs> This used, I remember, I remember this, this is a exact picture, used to hang on my, in my garage on my wall. This has been a presentation of Fellowship of Messiah with teacher Susan Miller. Video editing by Joel Thompson. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, click the thumbs up icon below the screen on the left, and subscribe by clicking the bell icon below this video and to the right to be notified of each new video we post. Know someone else who'd love this video? Click the arrow pointing to the right in the upper right hand corner of this video and share. Until next time, Shavuot Tov. Have a good week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His everlasting peace and harmony in every area of your life. In Hebrew, that is, Yivarekeka Yahuah V'yishmarecha, Ya'er Yahuah P'navalecha, V'ikuneka, Yisa Yahuah P'navalecha, V'yasem Lecha, Shalom.